uh, the next chart. If you had only one chart to look at, uh, to inform yourself about where we are and what the challenge is, I think this would be the, uh, uh, the chart. Um, this chart shows bars that represent the uh, amount of oil that we discovered year by year. And you see that we had huge, huge discoveries back in the 60s and uh, uh, 70s. And then from about the 80s on, really starting with about the 70s on, we progressively found it's a choppy up and down, but less and less and less oil. And that's in spite of ever better techniques for finding oil. The solid black line here represents the uh, uh, oil that we have uh, uh, used. And here's the 70s. And notice the uh, reduction in use there as a result of a worldwide recession brought on by the oil price spike hikes uh, then. Now, this is an expansion of the abscissa, and I indicated earlier that we would have a chart where we could see the huge difference in slope. Remember, we had that red one going almost straight up. That would, if we compress this abscissa, we could make that one go almost straight up. But notice how much lesser the slope is after the recession of the 70s. And that's because the world woke up and said, gee, oil is expensive, isn't it? And we can do better, and let's be more efficient. The air conditioner you have today may be two or three times more efficient, as is your refrigerator. Uh, we now have, have uh, fluorescent lights, and they're very much more efficient than, than incandescent lights for so forth. So this lesser slope of the curve represents increased efficiency. Were it not for that, were it not for that, Notice where we would be on this curve now. We would be off the top of the chart, wouldn't we, if this kept going? By the way, I just want to make one observation about exponential growth, and this, of course, is exponential growth. Albert Einstein said that uh, the most powerful force in the universe, he was, Dr. Einstein, what will be the next big force we find after nuclear energy? His response was the most powerful force in the universe is the power of uh, uh, compound interest. Just 2% growth, that's so anemic that our uh, market doesn't like it and it really kind of teeters, it stutters a little and doesn't grow with 2% growth. Things then tend to be pessimistic. But 2% growth doubles in 35 years. It's four times bigger in 70 years. It's eight times bigger in 105 years. And it's 16 times bigger in 140 years. Just 2% growth compound growth. So if this compound growth had continued, this would be off the top of the page. Can we, that was kind of a trauma going through those 70s, but we really should look back on it and say how lucky we were that we had a wake-up call, because look what happened. We got much more efficient, and so now we're in much less trouble than we would have been in had we not had this shock and if we'd continued along this, this curve. The uh, next chart The uh, next chart is uh, one from the U.S. Corps of Engineers. In general, all non-renewable resources follow a natural supply curve. Production increases rapidly, slows, reaches a peak, and then declines at a rapid pace similar to its initial increase. The major question for petroleum is not whether production will peak. This is one of the four studies your government paid for and is now ignoring. It's not whether the production will peak, but when. Oil is not infinite in its supply. It is finite. There's only so much. One day we will reach our maximum capability for producing oil. There are many estimates of recoverable petroleum reserves giving rise to many estimates of when peak oil will occur and how high the peak will be. A careful review of all the estimates leads to the conclusion that world oil production may peak within a few short years, after which it will decline. Once peak oil occurs, then the historic patterns of world oil demand and price cycles will cease. They might have gone to, on to explain what that's going to do to our economy. The uh, next slide, and I have to go back uh, more than 50 years to put this in uh, 
uh, context. Um, on the eighth day of March in 1956, the most important speech, what I think will shortly be recognized the most important speech of the last century was given. And this speech was given by a Shell oil company scientist, M. King Hubbard, to a uh, group of physicians in St. Paul, uh, Minnesota. At that time, the United States was king of oil. We were producing more oil, consuming more oil, and shipping more oil than any country in the world. And um, what M. King Hubbard told them was that in 16 short years, 14 short years, you're going to reach your maximum production of oil. He made that prediction in 1956. And sure enough, in 1970, the yellow symbols here, we reached our maximum uh, production. Now, the actual maximum production was a little bit higher. It was the green squares there. And they tended to be a little bit higher going down the slope on the other side of Hubbard's Peak. Some would have you believe that the difference between M. King Hubbard's predictions, the yellow triangles, and the actual oil that we pump uh, indicates that he really didn't know what he was talking about. Well, it did peak in 70, and it did go down after that. And if you aren't a statistician, I think the average person would look at that and say, gee, he really got it pretty right, didn't he? Now, the red squares there on the other side represent the total amount of oil that we pumped, because he had only predicted the lower 48, and we added huge amounts of oil from Alaska, a fourth of our total production for the last several years, and from the Gulf of Mexico. And even with those hugely uh, large extra supplies, there still was just a blip in the slope down the other side of Hubbard's Peak. Now, the same person that predicted that the United States would be peaking in 1970. In 1979, he predicted that the world would be peaking about now. We have kind of blown, not kind of, we've blown the last 28 years. Because by 1980, here we are in 1980, we look back and boy, M. King Hubbard was right about the United States. We did peak in 1970. And in spite of drilling more oil wells than all the rest of the world put together, we have not been able to make a liar out of M. King Hubbard. Today, we produce about half of the oil we produced in 1970. And in the lower 48, we produced way less than half of the oil that we produced then. Now, in 1979, I think it was, he predicted that the world would be peaking about now. And the next chart are data from two entities in our world that are pretty good at tracking how much uh, uh, oil we pump and use. And by the way, we use all we pump. There's no big reservoirs of oil anywhere waiting to be used. I would caution that uh, I do not think they have the same fidelity in predicting how much more we will find in the future, but they do a very good job of tracking what we've used. This is the EIA and the IEA. The IEA is the International Energy Agency. You hear them referred to, El Barati. They're the ones tracking what's going on in Iran with their nuclear thing. And the EIA, the Energy Information Administration, is a part of our own Department of Energy. And um, uh, both of those have oil production plateauing. One of them for about three years, the other for about a year and a half. Now what happens when demand keeps going up and supply stagnates? Ah, oh, this price curve shows you what happens. We had a comfortable dip here in prices a bit less than a year ago, but now they are skyrocketing. 115, of course, is off the top of this chart. We need to make a new chart, don't we, to show where 100, 115 is.